to Jai Long and this is Make Your Break. Whether you're a big-hearted creative or an aspiring entrepreneur, let's take action on your dreams. Reconnecting you with your why and giving you the how. I'm here to dish out actionable mindset tips and fun industry secrets to help you blow up your biz. From eye-opening reality checks to motivational gold, no two episodes are ever the same. So tune in weekly, skip the FOMO, and let's dive into the deep together. Have you ever thought about increasing your prices and what are the steps to make that happen? Or have you thought about cracking into the luxury market in whatever that you do? Attracting people that have a deeper pockets and maybe a more of an appreciation for what you actually do. Now, I talk a lot about this with so many different mentees. And today, I'm actually talking with Patty Betts. Patty Betts is a wedding photographer from North Carolina. And she left the podcast a review last month and she was the winner of my one-on-one mentoring session. So today is a snippet from our conversation that we had together and the questions that she asked. Now, to put things in the context, because I did just cut out a snippet, this is not the whole thing. She did ask me, how do I increase my prices and how do I attract a luxury clientele? So we dive straight into that. Now, if you want to be in the run-in to win a mentor session, just like this one, All you have to do is leave me a review on the Apple Podcast app and I go through and I'm always looking for the next review to hand that mentoring session on to someone. And who knows, maybe you could be the next person on the podcast as well. Now, today's interview, I actually think it's not an interview, mentoring session. I think you're probably going to learn a lot from it. So I really did want to publish it because I didn't want to just keep this just to one person. I know there's so many people out there right now that are looking to increase their value in their business and the position of their business so they can be more desired and they can create that luxury experience. So I'm really excited about this. Now, before I jump into this mentoring session, I also want to remind you that coming up, I've got the Marketing Accelerator and I'm actually going to talk a lot about this stuff in the Marketing Accelerator as well. So if you do want to jump on that and ask me some questions and everything else, it goes. it's going to go for about three hours. It is free zero dollars to join. You don't have to buy anything or do anything. I will have the six-figure business map opening up at that workshop as well. Of course, you don't need to be joining that if you don't want to take things to another level, but it is going to be a lot of fun. We will send you a workbook and everything. And all you have to do is head over and register at jialong.co. If you can't join me live, I'll send you a replay and it's going to be a lot of fun. So head over to jialong.co register your interest right there for the Marketing Accelerator Workshop and let's see if we can double your bookings in a short amount of time. If I'm looking at a 10K photographer, I am looking at uh, what are they doing? How are they showing up? Where are they marketing? What messaging have they got on their website? How good are their photos and everything else? And then I overshoot myself as a 10K photographer and then I only charge 5,000. And that way I'm in the realm of like being an irresistible offer. And I think that's a really good space to be. Now, the next thing is like with our messaging and things like that, it's like as you get more luxury, like people change on what they want. So for instance, when you're cheaper, you generally attract people that don't have money and people that don't have money, they have a lot of time and they have a lot of time because their time is not as valuable as someone that has a lot of money. When someone has a lot of money, they they really value their time. So we definitely value different things at different stages of our life. So if you find someone that has a little bit more money and a bigger budget, generally, if they want to spend more money, the reason being is because they want to buy back their time. And so buying back their time, when we're talking about messaging and how we show up on social media, on Instagram, things like that, it needs to pivot to talk about instead of you know, um, what's included in the packages and there's extra things and there's this and that. It needs to be like, how can I save you time? How can I give you less stress at your wedding day? How can I do those things? Now, one example is a lot of the times people think if you put up your prices, you need to add more things. But I want you to think about something like, for instance, Sizzler, all you can eat. When you go in there as a family restaurant and people that are attracted to a place like that, they generally don't have too much money. And so they're looking to bring a family and bring as much food as they can, get as much food as they can. They bring the takeaway containers and everything. And they're generally like, maybe they're complaining. They want a little bit more of something. But contrast to that is like going to a Michelin star restaurant where it's you know 10 times the price, but there's way less. There's way less food. And so there's way less in that. So an interesting thing there is like, if I'm going to a Michelin star restaurant, it's because one, I want status. Two, 
Uh, I want guaranteed that I'm going to have a good night. And three, like I value my time that I want to be around people and I want an experience that's going to be good for me, if that makes sense. When you said just comparing way less food, does that mean I need to offer like less things in my package and just like let oh, for them sure. add on or how does that work? How well, if you want to be more expensive, then you should have less things because people don't want more things uh, and they don't want to spend more time. So one example is um, cheaper photographers, they will add in like a free engagement session, but a more expensive mm-hmm. photographer, you will never meet one that has that because the reason being is they're trying to attract people that have less money because they've got more time. And that means like, for instance, if I booked a wedding photographer and they had a free engagement session, like I'd be annoyed because I'd be like, well, one, you don't even want it. So why would I want it? Like you're giving it to me for free Two, I don't have the time. That's why I'm hiring you. So I like the leading up to a wedding. I've got to organize a whole wedding. I do a lot of different things. I don't want to have to have an obligation of losing a whole day to photos when I don't really want that, if that makes sense. So you're making my life harder than, than easier. I've got more questions than no questions. Also, if you're cheaper, a lot of the times it's harder to get in touch with you because it's like the contact forms longer. You made it harder. There's maybe I have to come and have a meeting with you. I can't even just book you in. Like maybe I have to have a couple of meetings with you. Like, so, so it gets harder and harder. So the more expensive you are, the easier it should be because you're buying back time. So if someone wrote to me, two people write to me, right? One person will write to me and they'll say, Hey Jai, love your work. I've been following you on social media. Can I get your prices? And then the second person will give me their life story. Can you give me your prices? Can, is there any wiggle room or whatever? And so the second one, I always know that they've got less budget than the first one. The one that just writes one sentence to me, they've got a budget because they don't have time. There's a telltale. So when they write to me, I always write back to them and say, hey, I noticed that you sent me a very short email. I get it. I'm busy as well. Because of that reason, I want to do all the legwork for you. So from my promise is from the very start right now, all the way through, I'm going to do the heavy lifting and I'm going to make sure that I can even just liaise with your wedding planner. And so I take everything off your plate. So you're less stressed and you have a better time. How does that sound? And so my language would be completely different. Instead of saying like, I'm going to give you a free engagement session, I'm going to give you, you know, 20% off and I'm going to do this and that. I'm going to be there for an extra three hours or five hours or whatever. You give them less and less and less. So even another example is like I shot a wedding a little while ago and she she is now like, I think close to a billionaire. But she was talking about like second photographers and she's like, oh, I noticed in your package, you got a second photographer. Do we need that? I was like, to be honest, we don't. I can do it myself. I can do it all myself. And I can do it in less time as well. Is that what you're looking for? And she's like, yes, because I don't really want more photographers there. There's already going to be a few videographers and everything else. And I'm so used to having photos around and more photographers around. But if it's not necessary, could you please take that out? Now, she's not saying like lower the price. She's saying, I want less, please. You know, like <laughs> make it easier for me. And so that's the disconnect that we have when we put up our prices. We we start stuffing our our packages with more stuff, more time, you know, more add-ons and things. But really that just pushes more people away because it's no longer about the experience. It's about overcompensating by adding in more fluff to the packages. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So do you recommend having like a base package and then if they want to add on, they, they have the option like to add on more stuff? Yeah. So I always have at least three packages, like a few different reasons. One reason is because then I'm in different price ranges and people can see that I've got that. Of course, I include add-ons. Add-ons are really important, especially as you get more expensive because and and higher end. Higher end wants add-ons because people have money and they want to spend it on things and and it increases the client experience. So one example that I've used before is if I went to buy my favorite shirt and I seen it online and I love that shirt, if I walked into that shop and they only had that one shirt and there was no extras, no add-ons, no shoes, no socks, nothing else, I would be very disappointed and I would actually be annoyed that I have to only buy that shirt and I'd feel like I've got no options and, you know, they've done a disservice to me. But if I walked in there and I seen my favorite shirt, but I also seen three other shirts that I love and I also seen some accessories and a watch and a a whole bunch of things as I'm out with my credit card, I'll be like, thank you for allowing me to actually shop, have choices and spend my money like I wanted to spend my money on this trip. So it's the same as photographers. What we do is we tend to think no one's got money and no one wants to spend. And I don't know why we think this, but people, when they get out the credit card, they love to spend. And then we give them no options. 
and no options, no choices, no add-ons, nothing for them to get excited about and excited to get their credit card out for. And after a while, what they say is like, oh, we're going to go with someone else. Sorry, you're out of our budget. The only reason why you're out of their budget is because it wasn't a great buying experience. There wasn't enough buying information. The messaging was wrong. There wasn't any upsells or anything to be excited about to work with you. And so, of course, they go with someone else. And I know after show, shooting 500 weddings, when people told me I was out of their budget and they went with someone else, generally they spent more money with them than they would have with me. And that means it wasn't the budget. It's just that I had a problem with my packages and with my upsells. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> Good. So like going back to like the original question. So like, yep. and now that I like targeting a different audience, how do I go about switching? targeting one there's, audience and communicating to another one. There's a few different ways that we do it. So here's one example. If you go to a Louis Vuitton shop or a um, Chanel shop or a Dior shop, and when you go down in the city, generally they're sitting next to one another. So a Prada store will be right next door to Louis Vuitton, which will be right next door and so on and so forth. They're never next door to McDonald's. They're never next door to H&M or any, any of those stores, right? Now, the reason being is because they become luxury by association, and this is a marketing ploy. Now, one thing that we do is we take photos for our clients, but we don't really think about where they are, what they're wearing, and everything else. And so, one real subtle way of marketing, but subtle is luxury, is showing venues that are in that higher price range, showing products that are in that higher price range, showing gowns in that higher price range and associating yourself with those products. Now, so often, like I personally wouldn't share uh, a photo of say a dress just because I know where it's from and I know it's in the wrong price bracket and I know it's cheap and my clients that are what, uh, that are following me, then they're, no, they're not inspired by the big price tags. And so I would make sure always I'm sharing like the big price tag venue, the big, and like just picking and choosing what's at a venue and then what can I share? What should I share? And what shouldn't I share? If I'm at a venue and there's a really expensive florist there, I'll be sharing lots of the florist and the flowers and, and how we partnered together. And I'll be featuring them with me because then people go, Oh, if Jai's in the same price range of that florist, I love that florist, you know, they're well known all over the place. And so then I become equal partners with them. So if you are sharing stuff where it's just, it's not in line with what your clients love and are inspired by, because we follow social media or anyone on social media, because we're inspired to be like that person or because maybe we have aspirations, maybe we want to buy one of those products one day, or maybe we can't afford it when we, and we will one day. You know, so we we definitely follow luxury products and things that we, you know, you maybe you follow, for instance, like Canon cameras and the ones that you can't afford and one day you're going to get it. And it's just amazing. Maybe someone follows watches and, and one day they're going to get it. Like lately I've been following furniture that I can't afford. All these things is because we aspire for something else. But things I don't follow is the furniture stores that I can't afford that I don't really like because it's not inspiring for me to look at on a day to day. So we've got to become more inspiring with um, our photography and what we're putting out there to be in line with the right people. And you can do this with styled shoots. I mean, you can do styled shoots where you include products, product placement, where you can leverage the other person's audience. So you could do one with a wedding planner, a venue, gown, makeup, florist, like, you know, whatever it is. But they're all going to be in that same league where it's the same price point as you and you can't do something with someone else because it's devaluing your brand. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so with that, how do I diversify my marketing? Because I mean, to speak to this new audience, they're not always all going to be on Instagram. They don't have time for it too. So how do I diversify my marketing in a way that is like, I can reach them is sustainable in case Instagram just crashes? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think, um, one really important thing for you to do is to learn some new skills. So Instagram, like we, we kind of get stuck on like what we know and then we never change, but there's amazing opportunities right now with um, paid ads, Facebook ads, Google ads, TikTok ads. There's amazing opportunities across different platforms. Like I work with people that literally book out a whole year just through LinkedIn because there's no one else on LinkedIn competing with them. And it's just like, what you want to be is you don't want to compete with everybody else. You want to be where other people are not. It's one of the easiest ways to stand out. And if you only need to book 30, 40 clients per year, then it's very easy. 
And so mm-hmm. if you're trying to find somewhere somewhere where people are not, uh, it could be creating your own Facebook group, could be creating a podcast episodes um, or a podcast show just around people getting married in your, in your area or planning weddings or something like that. Could be going out to wedding venues in your area and just bringing them um, some value in some way by saying like, hey, can I shoot for you? Can I organize a style shoot for you guys? Could I update your website? Could I bring out a wedding album? Uh, what can I do for you to bring you value so we can work together because I love your venue, right? And so if we're doing that, there's a whole nother way, but we need a strategy around that too because if we kind of just do it sometimes, like it's not as good as if same as Instagram, it's like, you know, you post daily. So why not daily are you not reaching out to a new vendor? I mean, that's a strategy now. So if you did that for the next 30 days, that's 30 vendors. And then maybe you even did blog posts on each vendor and you got them to fill out a questionnaire. And then... um and you interviewed them and they're all in that same price bracket that you're trying to lean against like we talked about before. Now, all of a sudden, you are creating tons of content that you can also repurpose and put on Instagram. You're bringing people through SEO and you're showing people that you're more expensive from the get-go when they get onto your website and they see who you're associated with. Yeah, that's all very helpful. Thank you. Yeah. And some of these things, like it's just, it is important to know that there's a knowledge gap. I mean, that's what we all have. And if there's a knowledge gap, it's like, I would go and learn some, just one or two or three new marketing strategies, just to make sure that like, once you get your Instagram on lock and you've got people coming in, just so you can move over to another pillar. So your whole business is not built just on that one thing. Um. So with one of those pillars, let's say like I'm reaching out to new vendors daily. Let's say if I want to, I guess, focus first on reaching out to like planners because they're usually the ones planning the wedding of people that have these budgets. Um, What would be your advice on how to like approach them, approach that, like reaching out to planners? So when you're reaching out to anybody, there's going to be a few different things. Like there's a bit of mindset here as well. So one mindset thing is you got to realize that a lot of people are going to reject you, like probably one out of one out of 10. And that's normal because when some, when you come up to somebody and you meet them in the street, for instance, and you're just cold and no one knows who you are, it's human instinct to say, I'm sorry, I'm not interested. I don't know who you are. And so we get disheartened when we, when we get one no um, straight away. And then we don't realize that we need to show up and we need nine no's to get to the one. Yes. So that's really important. Second thing is it's all about bringing value and it's about not expecting anything in return. So if you could show up and you could go out there And literally, like just, you can do it right now, like straight after this on your phone, send a DM, video message, introduce yourself and just say, hey, I'd love to talk to you. I'd love to be at your venue. I'd love to work with you. I know you're a wedding planner. I've followed you for a while now. I love the stuff that you're doing. Like, here's me. This is what I'm up to. If you've ever got any opportunities where you need some work, you need some new content, you need some update your website, like whatever it is. If you've got a wedding guide, or if you've got a wedding, like, Hey, you could create them a wedding guide. I mean, that's, if you don't have a wedding guide, I can create you one. And then you can give tips from a photographer. If they're a wedding planner, you could have tips from a photographer and then you can have yourself in there. Follow along on the Instagram for more tips. I mean, that's a great way. You could send that to wedding venues as well. You could create custom wedding guides just for venues. So then that way you're featured in each one of them. Another way is like you want to get onto people's recommended vendor guides or recommended vendor pages. But the way that I like to do it is just create your own because so often we're asking, asking, but we're not giving, giving. So if you flip the script and you start give, giving, then you create your recommended vendor guide. And then I would reach out to people and say, hey, I would love to include you on my recommended vendor guide. I know we haven't worked together before, but I've seen you all over Instagram. I see you featured all the time. My clients love you. They rave about you guys. And I would love the chance to work alongside you guys one day. How does that sound? And chances are they say, oh my God, thank you so much. That's so good. And then you can follow up with them in a few weeks and say, hey, just want to know, did anyone reach out or anything? And do you guys have a recommended vendor guide? Like how can we get this relationship to work faster, you know? And then you'll be surprised you do that for 10 people. Maybe one of them will add you to their recommended vendor guide. So all you need, you only need a couple. And then that's a whole strategy of word of mouth once again. So yeah, that's how I'll do it. It's like, make sure you've got open arms and you're doing it regardless if they're going to give you something back in return, but be very mindful of who you're doing this work for. Make sure they're in your price range and they're bringing your brand upwards, not bringing it downwards. Are we able to do like something like where you just go on my website and see if it's aligned with what we're talking about? It's betsphotography.co. So just some quick 
feedback. Uh, it looks really good. I love all your images straight away. I love that the first thing that you say is where you are, which is really good. Helping you relieve the joy of your wedding day and your photos with video at your door. Your hook is really good straight away and you're talking to you. So as in like you're talking to the client, which is good because so often people use the wrong language and they say like, uh, hey, you guys, as if there's lots of people looking at their website, but they're not. Mm -hmm. uh, you found your soulmate. How crazy beautiful is that? Love it. Who we are. So you got a photo of you guys. You got lots of reviews. Get your starting price. Yeah, everything like you are in the price range that you want to be in. Everything looks really well crafted. Your design looks really good. Your images look really good. The language is really good. Honestly, like your website is not anything to work on. So, so often there's like a weak link. Your website's definitely not the weak link. And so if I was you, you just need to get onto more marketing, you know? Yeah. We can yeah. we can obsess over so many little things in our business, but your website, like it's not really going to make that much of a difference until you start making, you know, 100,000, 200,000. That's when I'd start going back and retweaking and making sure that it's 100% perfect, but it literally looks 100% perfect. Like you're already killing it. Thank you so much. That means yeah. a lot. Yeah, well um, done. You should be super proud of it as well. I can I can honestly tell how much work you've put into that website. Thank you. Thank you. I listened to your episode on the website like three times while I was working on it. That's so, awesome. Um, I can tell. I got all of those tips. Thank you. That's so good. Um, so you mentioned something about it only matters when you go from 100K to 200K. So what do you need to do different, I guess? It's very different. what gets you to 100K to get to what gets you to 200K. Uh, you have you made 100K per year? Is that where you're at? I have. Yes. Yep. So you're between the 100 and 200? I, I guess so because I've made 100K. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, so that's the goal. So, well, the thing is with 100K, it's a very achievable and attainable goal. And all you have to do is like you really don't need anything. You just, you can, all you need is some, some sweat equity and you need some ambition and you can go out there and hustle your way. Like um, one example is like Lilu sells website templates and she was making six figures in her business before she even had a website. You know, and so I see that often. So we can get out there and we can hustle. We can use, we can DM people on Instagram instead of having a website. We can use our social media accounts, portfolios, as long as we can overcompensate with hard work and grit and just keep showing up and keep showing up. Now it becomes more unsustainable once we go from 100K up to 500K. Because as you go higher and higher, there's a few things that change. One is you've got more volume of work, more people are coming in. So it's harder to show up and be manually doing things. So you do need to put systems into place. Your marketing needs to be, you need strategies now, because instead of just throwing things at the wall, you need predictable strategies that are working over and over and you can like trace those things. The next thing is you need analytics and data. So you need to be able to actually track Where's all your leads coming from? What marketing strategy is working the best? Where's your money best spent? Like, and things like that. Because if you don't track, you can't grow because you only can grow what you can track. The reason being is because you can go in, you can start seeing what metrics are working and where you need to put time. So for instance, if you're tracking all your metrics, you might know right now that your website's not converting very well. So you know that you need to work on your website. But if your website's working really well, then you know you don't need to spend time on that. And then you can work on the next thing. So it's like maybe conversion rates are low. Maybe engagement on social media is low. Maybe open rate of your emails are low. Maybe like whatever it is, it could be something else that is lacking. And until you start tracking all those things, you can't see the holes in your funnel. Last thing is like with going from 100 to 500K, it really does come down to all the small things. Like they all matter so much. Where going from zero to a hundred. Like it doesn't matter if you've got upsells, doesn't matter if you sell albums, doesn't matter if you have order bumps, doesn't matter if you cross sell, doesn't matter if you don't do anything. It doesn't matter if you've got no packages, but it does matter when you start getting, especially up to 500K because it matters because what you're trying to do is you're trying to get the lifetime value of the customer higher. And that's like reselling them on new things, like maybe an engagement session, maybe on the wedding, maybe on family sessions, maybe on, you know, whatever it is but also just the value of the client gets higher. So that's why it matters when you are selling a wedding album, some parent albums, a wedding album to the brother, some prints, some prints to all the guests, you know, a second day, a third day of photography, a third photographer, a videographer, you've got a photo booth now and you're expanding out and you've got more things for your clients to buy. Because when 
you do attract people that have more money, you will be booking less of them, of course, but they'll be spending a lot more money with you. And so that's why it's important to solve all those problems. So when I was doing 500,000 per year, like, yes, I did have my own photo booth. I had my own DJ. Like I've had my own videographer. I've got second photographers. I solved all their problems. I sold every product. And it meant that when they came in, they're like, Jai, so can I get all this all on one invoice? And then can you just charge me to my Amex card so I can get a free flight for my honeymoon? I'm like, absolutely. Of course I can. Where when you're cheaper, you're like, no, I don't take credit card because I don't want to spend $5 on fees. And you know what I mean? Like it's a whole different game yeah, because, yeah. because you're dollar and diming and you, and you care about the money instead of the time. But these people care about the time. So it's like take the money any way possible. Sell them as much stuff as they want because they love the fact that they can get out their credit card and spend. That's what they're doing. So that's the big difference. Um, having strategy is one of the biggest differences and having help as well. So I think from zero to hundred K, a lot of us, we like to be in this entrepreneurial phase where we want to believe that we do everything and no one can do anything as good as us. No one's as talented as us. No one can shoot anything as good as us. No one can do emails as good as us. And we self-sabotage ourselves into burnout and we do everything ourselves, but there is no award for the person that does everything for themselves. Even though we pat ourselves on the back and we say, look how good I am. I am literally a genius because I did it all. But the true geniuses are the people like Steve Jobs that literally all he does is manage people and gets everybody onto the same page and sees the same vision. So if you had more people on the same page and the same vision, then you are stepping into uh, a CEO role and where you're actually now managing stuff. So you could have more photographers, you could have VAs, virtual assistants, more programs, um, you could outsource more things and you're buying back your time, which means you could have a better client experience and you're spending more time with your clients, more time marketing, less time editing, less time on the emails, less time doing all the things that are low value tasks. Yeah, that makes sense. So would you say that like from like, between like 100K and 500K, where's the best place to invest your money back in your business? Is it like outsourcing basically what you just said or? Absolutely. So, I mean, it's two main things. It's obviously, it's, it's always our knowledge gap. So like you've got to, so people that go from like zero to 100K, they generally they don't want to sign up to workshops or do courses or get a coach or anything because they're like, oh no, I can do it all myself. I'm watching YouTube. But as you're getting like into the higher bracket, you want stuff fast because you don't mind spending the money for it. You just want results because every day you're not getting a result, it's costing you a lot of money. And so you start thinking differently. So that's a big one. The second thing is, it's like, I would make a list of all the things that you do each day and see how much you could outsource it for. One example is I do this with a lot of my students where we'll go and find the best photo and video editors out there and they will do a whole wedding for $300. And then, but they usually spend a whole week you know, editing a whole wedding. I'm like, you know, you pay yourself $300 per week. And so you could never be a multi six figure entrepreneur because, because you are an employee of yourself and you haven't expanded your own mindset and your own education. You haven't got those skills. So we need to keep upgrading those skills. It's kind of the same as when we upgrade our iPhones or upgrade our new cameras or we upgrade our um, cars when they come out. So our mindset and our mind, we have to keep upgrading and learning the new strategies and the things that we got to do to be the best captains of our ship. So I believe that and outsourcing all the low value tasks. So whatever you can see right now that you know that like you could get someone for $10 an hour to write all those emails. And if you're doing them yourself, you're dramatically slowing down growth in your business. That's so mind blowing. Everything. <laughs> That's so good. Okay, I have one last question. I think. Um, Let's do and it. And it's about email list. Like, do you is email list somewhere you recommend? I would like spend time and make a strategy for this type of new audience. And how can I implement that with wedding photography? Absolutely. Email lists are amazing. It's something that I've been using for a long time. I've been able to book out six figures per year just from my emailing list. It's when I talked about before, do you have a strategy for word of mouth? This is one of the strategies for word of mouth. The reason being is because your email list is you keep everyone that's ever sent you an inquiry before, that's ever liked your work before and that you've worked with before. And after a few years, when you keep sending them out monthly emails and letting them up to date of like, hey, I'm just shooting a wedding in Chicago. I'm excited about this. And hey, I just shot this wedding. Check out this slideshow from this this recent blog that I just did or whatever it is, um, you're keeping everyone front of mind for as long as your business is alive. And so they will keep referring you for years to come. 
So I had clients that referred me like seven years later, just because like, Jai, like I know your price is way higher and everything, but I, lo- I followed the journey. Now I recommend you to everyone. And it's because I keep reminding him over and over. Now, how do we do this? Personally, if you've making over hundred K, like hire a VA, I would go on upwork.com and then I would find someone that's good at email and marketing and I would get, literally get them to set that? it all up. Upwork.com. You find something like this, we get so scared of like outsourcing, but the thing is, it would probably cost you $150 maybe to have someone like tell you what platform to use, set it all up for you, integrate all your emails in there, show you the workflow of how to do it, and then you're done and you're ready to go. So again, you could have this done by straight after this call. (laughs) Yes, I could. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it is really good, like having email lists and anything like that, like having, I believe the best marketing you can do is referral marketing. So just like people sharing with their friends and family. And how do we do that? Well, one is, of course, we create the best experience possible, right? We serve them at the best, highest level. So then they keep talking about us all the time. And the second phase of it is we keep reminding them that we exist because people do forget. And we do that through, of course, social media, email marketing, and there's probably a hundred different ways, but it's just having a strategy of understanding like, okay, this is why I'm showing up like this. This is how client centric I am. And then like, and this is how I'm going to keep following up and reminding them that I'm here, I'm ready to do business with them. And they're probably going to refer me to all their friends and family and everybody else. Cool. Well, thank you so much for jumping on the call with me. And thank you so much for leaving me a review as well. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I really appreciate you doing this for me because of the review and all, sharing all of your knowledge and your time with me. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Have you listened to the podcast for a long time? Uh, no, I started listening to it like this year, like two months ago. Cool. But I've That's so listened cool. to a lot of episodes at this point. So. That's awesome. I'm glad it's found you at the exact right time. And I appreciate you. Yeah, I appreciate you too. Thank you so, so much. Hey, Make Your Breakers, don't you hate how you can't sort through podcasts by most listened to, most reviewed, and most loved? Ah, right? As fellow podcast junkies, we feel you. While we can't magically change Apple or Spotify's platform, we have created a little something something. Sifting through all of Make Your Breaks episodes to date, yep, we are talking all 200 plus episodes. We've meticulously curated some banging playlists just for you. We're talking the all-time hottest hits from Make Your Break, starring the juicy inspiration, motivation, and creative biz insights you know and love. Sound good? Jump into the show notes and follow the link to generate your very own Make Your Break playlist.